On this episode of Brewing Around the Realm, I brew up a Chinook Session IPA. Let's get started. Welcome back to Brewing Around the Realm. I am Dave, your amateur brewmaster. And on this week's episode, I'm brewing up a Chinook Session IPA. If you've been with the channel since the beginning, you know that the very first recipe I ever brewed was a Chinook Extract IPA that I got with the Northern Brewer GoPro Starter Kit. That didn't come out very great, but for my first beer I didn't think it was so bad. With all of the brewing knowledge I've acquired over the last year, I didn't want to brew the all-grain edition of the Chinook IPA from Northern Brewer, so I came up with my own very simple recipe. I did a little bit of research, figured that I needed something light, and low on IBUs. So this beer only has about 40 IBUs in it. A very small amount of Chinook hops. Certainly less than you would have expected for a six gallon batch. But because this was a session IPA, I didn't want to go with anything really heavy. Let's get started by taking a look at today's recipe. I'll show you the ingredients. Then I'll come back afterwards and tell you how everything worked out. Today's recipe is super simple. It is 11 pounds of two row, 1.5 pounds of crystal 20. We've got Chinook hops for today's brew. Baking soda, gypsum, whirl flock, yeast nutrient. I'm using WLP095. This is the same yeast they used in the double dry hop IPA I did a couple weeks back. I've got a nice starter of this going. And that's it. So let's get mashing in. I got this mixed up real good. I think I got all the dough balls out. And, uh, I'm using 1.25 quarts per pound today. Uh, I normally would have used, when I was using the five gallon cooler, one quart per pound, and I think this should work out nicely. You can see this is a much looser mash than I'm usually dealing with, which I think is really gonna help out. The mash temperature for today is 152, and Whoa, we are way high. But, that's okay, we'll make it work. Alright, our mash time is up. My assistant here is going to throw in our first ward hop, so go ahead and throw those in there. Alright, time to sparge and drain this in here. We're doing a full boil today, so I've got my entire setup ready to go. I'm going to sparge from the old 5-gallon mash ton into the 10 gallon mash ton and then directly into the kettle. So hopefully this works out right. instead of 7.5, uh, which just is fine. It just means i got to do a 90-minute boil today instead of a 60-minute one like I was planning, but, you know, it's not an issue, and I know for next time to just increase my sparge water by half a gallon, and uh, it should work out. All right, at this point, I've gone through an hour and 15 minutes worth of boil time. We're down to 15 minutes left, so we get the wort chiller in. Whirl flock goes in. And that is it. We'll be back in five minutes for our first hop edition. Alright, ten minutes left and goes a half an ounce of Chinook. Alright, one minute left. Another half an ounce of Chinook. Flame out. I'm now going to chill this down with the board chiller to 170 and then do my 30 minute hop stand. I'm down to 170 so in goes this first half ounce and that'll be in there for 15 minutes then I'll add the next half ounce. Alright last hop stand and goes an extra half an ounce and I have had to turn on the burner to keep this at 170 
that may be something you want to look out for. Keep, uh, keep checking your temperature as you're going along. Cool 30 minute hop stand is up. Uh, cool this the rest of the way and get this into the fermenter. Finally got the work chilled down. I'm ready to pitch the yeast in. I did a gravity reading and we ended up at 10.52. Target was 10.56 and I really just could have boiled that an extra 15 minutes or 20 minutes and probably gotten that. But it's a learning lesson. This is new equipment for me and I was just figuring this stuff out for today so I know better for next time. Uh, I'm very happy with that. I've got five and a half gallons here which is pretty much exactly what I wanted. I've got the yeast here which I decanted. Saved some for next time. I'm gonna swirl this up here. Let's dump it in. Got the airlock ready and uh, let's see how this one turned out. As you saw from that brew day, that was a pretty straightforward brew day. This is the very first brew day that I used the new 10 gallon mash tun and 10 gallon kettle on. And it's the first full boil I did without having to use a side boil. It worked out really well. Obviously, starting out my mash water at a higher temperature kind of screwed me over. I really didn't want to start out at 160. I did let that cool down to 154, which was my target. But because of that, the beer came out and it only was 3.5% alcohol. Honestly, you can't really tell the difference. I have that beer right here. came out very, very clear. This was the second beer that I had ever kegged. You can see from that that it has a very nice, thick head on it. And, and I poured this beer a couple minutes ago out of the keg. And uh, that foam is still there. So a very nice head retention, which kind of surprised me. I think that was mostly because of the higher mash temperature that I started with. Let's take a little sniff. And just from smelling that, it is really, really piney. It's exactly what I would, would expect from a Chinook IPA. Get that up close to the camera. This is really clear. You can see the color is a nice, light, golden color, which I was really surprised with. I, I expected this to be a little bit lighter than this, but Consider I only put a pound and a half of Crystal 20 in here. This worked out really, really well. I'm really happy with it. So let me take a taste for you. Um, I'll be honest. This is a really nice body on this. Uh, mostly, I think, again, because of the higher mash temperature. And if I didn't know better, I'd never know this was only 3.5% alcohol. It worked out really, really well. I would recommend doing this again. Uh, I'm definitely going to do this again. I think I'll try to do some other brew days with this. And I have enough hops in the freezer with the Citrus Simcoe. Uh, I have some Centennial in there. I, I could make a, a bunch of different unique single hop IPAs out of this. And uh, try some different things out. But I definitely like Chinook IPAs. And I think I would definitely make this again. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Remember to like, subscribe, and share if you haven't clicked that bell notification icon to keep up to date with all my future videos. Please do so. I would be greatly appreciated. And uh, if you've watched more than a couple of videos, it's probably time to click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Till next time, remember, I make all the brewing mistakes so you don't have to.